So what happens is that taqwa means that we're all about doing our responsibility because of our love of God. All about doing what God wants for us to do. Making sure we do our responsibility right? under all circumstances. More than that, what about when we have conflicting responsibilities? I have two things to do. Both of them are wajib. Or one is haram if I do it, the other is wajib. Which one in that case? Let me give you an example from Karbala, right? from the story of Imam Hussein. The example is that, as you've heard the story of Karbala, the Imam was making hajj. We've all, we're familiar with the story and what happened when the, the actual battle happened. The Imam was in Karbala, was, went from Mecca to Medina, and over there in Medina he's making hajj. When he's making hajj, they get word that Yazid wants to slaughter you right inside the shrine. The Imam sees that, okay, I have one responsibility, I would like to make hajj. Another one, which is to go over and to go against the Taghut, that one's more important. The Imam abandons the Hajj, turns it into Umrah, and he goes. Now, this is the part, though, for you and I. There were people also with the Imam who were doing the same thing. Even amongst those people, obviously, some of them must not have made Hajj. Isn't Hajj wajib? Isn't Hajj wajib if you've never made Hajj? 100%. Why would they also leave the Hajj, which was wajib? What happens is, if you have two wajib, and one is more important, like for instance, following the Imam, saving Islam, doing the work of Imam Mahdi that the, the Imam Hussein was doing, that one was more important. So even if you have two duties, because the focus is on doing my, my duty and my responsibility, whatever duty is more important. And we need this. This is for brothers and sisters who actually want to go to the next level of Iman, the next level of faith. We say that, okay, it's not enough for me just to be doing my wajibat. I have to increase my Iman. I have to have spiritual ambition. I want to be one of the elite soldiers of the Imam. The focus has to be responsibility. After that, what's my primary responsibility? What does God want from me now? Let's make it personal in our spiritual lives, in my spiritual life. In my spiritual life, I also have to see in a every, on an everyday basis what my duty is. Sometimes, for instance, as a Muslim, praying salah in the first time, when it first comes in, that's actually a very good thing. When we listen to, let's say, Ayatollah Bahja, Allah have mercy on him, right? We say, okay, how, how can I get to those higher levels of spirituality? One of the things they emphasize on is praying salah as soon as it comes in, okay? But now, this is just an example in our personal lives. Sometimes, praying on time might conflict, praying at the first time, might conflict with another responsibility that I have. There was one muqaddas person, one very holy person, and he was known that I always pray salat on time, and years and years he had done this. When one of these, or I heard about, he said, how could that be the case? He, you're telling me he never had any duty which took precedence over that? Let's say your wife is about to deliver. No. Islam says namaz awal Allahu akbar. Your wife's about to deliver. Huh? For instance. Or a, a wife, let me make it with this. A wife, she says that I, for instance, I go and I always like to listen to dua kumail. But now... My child needs my assistance. Before I would make salah and it would be very lengthy. When I was single, for instance, now I have a child, I have to make my salah shorter, right? Would she be the person who would be, now I'm resentful. This little knucklehead came into my life, the little baby. I can't make the salah I used to make because, right? Or she say that I prioritize. My focus is God. What's my responsibility? What's my primary responsibility? And I focus on that for spirituality. One of the things, now keep this in mind, for us as Muslims, when we look back in history and see when it is that we were defeated, when it is that we were victorious, one of the things that defeated us was when the Muslims, the masses and the elite, the masses and those people who would analyze and make decisions, both sides would be people who couldn't distinguish what was their primary duty and they would start doing secondary duties. Those Muslims were the people who would get defeated.
People who couldn't recognize, let's just make it practical right now. If I don't recognize the importance of unity at this time, and I think it's more important for me to have majalis where I openly say some of the beliefs of the Ahlul Bayt, even if it's at the price of pushing people away from the path of Ahlul Bayt. I haven't lost, I don't know what my primary duties are, I don't know what my secondary duties are. Leads to defeat. So, haqwa, even in the spiritual realm, what is, what is it God wants from me right now? It's of strategic importance to me as a Muslim. What do we need to be, what should the focus be? What should we be trying to do? What needs to be corrected? What are the most important things, right? That's what we're looking for in top.